Now that we're back at the diagnostic hub of the Genesis tool, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and begin the procedure to perform our basic settings. Now, an important safety tip here is anytime you do a basic setting on any system, it's always a good idea to start by checking for and clearing any diagnostic trouble codes that may be present in the system that you're trying to basic set. What we want is we want a clean start to the, to the basic setting and, and making sure that the codes are gone gives you that clean start. So this is very simple. Once again, at the Diagnostic Hub, I can go right here to read DTCs and simply click on that. So as you can see, we actually do have trouble codes stored in the system. So we want to make sure that we clear those trouble codes because as I said, you can get into an issue with trouble codes stored in the system. You want everything to be clean. Now, if you'll notice the code, this code is actually telling us that the battery voltage has gone a little bit lower than normal. And that's perfectly natural if the car has been sitting with the key in the on position or anything along those lines. So whenever you're doing a basic setting, you don't want the voltage to fall below approximately 10 and a half volts on a Volkswagen or an Audi. You can run into corruption problems with the basic setting procedure at that point. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've put a battery maintainer on the vehicle and that's going to keep that voltage at approximately 14.2 volts through this entire procedure and that eliminates that type of a problem. Now, a standard battery charger could be used as well if you don't have a battery maintainer, but if you're going to be getting into doing basic settings and reflashes and other things on vehicles, a maintainer is a nice piece of equipment to have. All right. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clear this diagnostic trouble code. So we're starting with a clean slate, starting fresh, and then we're going to go ahead and, and uh, finish getting the vehicle set up to actually perform the caliper service by retracting, re-extending, and then uh, function testing the calipers. So I'm going to go ahead and go right here to clear DTCs. And um, am I sure I want to clear all diagnostic trouble codes? Absolutely. And now we've cleared the trouble codes. We're ready to move on. Now, at this point, I'm back to the main screen again. But before I do anything further with the scan tool, I have to pre-prep the vehicle for doing this set of, uh, of basic settings. So to pre-prep the vehicle, what I need to do is I'll need to get in the vehicle. I'll need to actually energize the parking brake then de-energize the parking brake, then we can begin. So I'm going to get in the vehicle and we'll get set to go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to activate the electronic parking brake. To start this procedure, the electronic parking brake must be activated, then we must wait 30 seconds until all caliper movement has stopped, then we'll deactivate the electronic parking brake, and once that's completed, we can move back to the scan tool and actually start the retract procedure, the rehome procedure, and the, and the function test procedure. So to activate the parking brake, all I need to do is press this button right here. And you may actually be able to hear the parking brake activate. It's, it's fairly loud. It's activated, and now it's stopped moving. So we wait 30 seconds to allow the system to uh, finish all necessary movement, and then we'll turn the parking brake back off again. To disengage the parking brake, I'm going to get in the car, as you see, and I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle. And now with the vehicle started, I'm going to push down on the service brake, I'm going to pull the vehicle into drive, and I'm going to release the parking brake. And we're all set to go. Now I'm going to go ahead, shut the vehicle back off, and now we can move to the scan tool to continue on. So now we can actually start to perform the procedure. We're going to start by retracting the calipers. Now, what would normally happen is you would retract the calipers. Once they're retracted, you disassemble and do whatever you need to be uh, doing. What, that could be replacing pads, it could be replacing rotors, what have you. But we need to gain the clearance to replace components, so that's step one. Step two, we're going to go ahead and select ABS. That's going to get us to this screen, and what we're going to do next is go down here to select ECU. And that brings up the full list of ECUs. We want to be in chassis. And now, if you look across here, you'll see address word 53, parking brake. This is the control set for the parking brake. So to do anything in this parking brake module, we have to access that specific module. So all I need to do is click here to access that module. 
Now this pop-up here just tells you that not all ECUs are available on every vehicle, so that's not a big deal. Uh, we know that. So we'll hit OK. And now it's going to basically talk about the aftermarket radio. If it has an aftermarket radio, they can be installed incorrectly. When that happens, you can actually run into a situation where you won't be able to communicate or, in some cases, damage a scan tool. So in this particular case, everything is factory, so we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to continue on and say, nope, this is not a problem with this particular radio. So now we're back once again to the main diagnostic hub. And what we want to do is we want to go here to special tests. And special tests is going to allow us to actually enter a specific test group. And what we want to do is we want to go into basic settings, which is 04 right here. And this just gives us a warning to let us know that uh, uh, this can, can uh, uh, cause issues in, unless you're doing the, the correct procedures. Now we're, we're going to be doing the correct procedures, so we're just going to hit OK. And now we're to our diagnostic data group entry screen. What we're going to do is we're going to enter the correct data group. Now if you recall, when we pulled up the information, what we want to do is go into group 07 to start the retract procedure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to enter 7. At this point, we're in the basic setting screen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start the basic setting, and this will allow the calipers to retract so that we put them in the service position. At this point, you should actually hear the calipers start to move. What we're doing is we're retracting them to put them into the service position so that you can actually service whatever it is you need to do on the brakes, replacing pads, uh, putting on a new rotor, resurfacing a rotor, whatever it is. So, the pads are now retracted, we're in the service position. We go ahead and disassemble the brakes, perform whatever we need to uh, perform, and after we've performed everything and bolted everything back on, once again, you can leave the wheels off, but everything on the calipers have to be bolted on and in position, the correct position. Now what we want to do is we want to go back and we're going to extend the calipers to set the proper position with the new pads or what have, whatever uh, service work you've done. So to do that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back up here after 30 seconds have elapsed, which has happened, and we're going to exit the test. And now we're going to go back to basic settings. And once we get back here, we're going to enter 6. 6 is going to re-extend the pads to their proper position. At this point now, you should be able to hear the calipers actually re-extending. And what they're going to do is they're going to re-extend to the point where they clamp down on the rotors and then stop moving. When that happens, that's what actually inserts the information that tells the calipers where the lockup point is and tells the, the system where the lockup point is so it knows that now it has engaged the parking brake. So once again, after 30 seconds, once we've allowed the calipers to return, the final step in performing this service is to run the full functional test. And the full functional test is done in exactly the same way that we've been doing everything else here. We're going to go back in once again to basic settings and we're going to go ahead and enter 10 for the functional test. Once we've entered 10, the system will actually retract and extend the calipers three different times to verify settings. Once that's complete, our parking brake procedure is done and at that point it's a matter of just taking off all the equipment, test driving the vehicle, verifying that no codes return and there's no issues with parking brake operation and we are done. And we've done it the right way, the safe way and the way that's going to ensure that you don't damage anything. So once again, this tool with the information that you can get from Identifix directly at the fender with this tool can save you a whole lot of headache when doing parking brake. Let's go ahead and finish up here. choosing basic settings. This time I'm going to enter 10. And the system will now run through the extender and retract. You can probably once again hear the calipers actually moving. This happens three times. And we're complete. At this point everything is finished, done safely, done correctly, and we are done with this job. 
For our final scenario, I have a 2012 Nissan Rogue. The customer complains of a light misfire under load, and when going down the highway with a light load, it misfires even more. Not predominant, not enough to cause the engine to shake at idle, because I'm at idle right now and I don't feel a misfire, but when I step on the brake pedal and I load it up in drive, it does misfire slightly. So let's look at a scenario on how to diagnose what that problem might be. First, I'm going to go to DTCs to determine if I've got a fault code. And the DTCs will come up. Let's see if we have a fault code. And no, I have no diagnostic trouble codes. So my next step would be to go to Global OBD2, Mode 6, and look for misfire information under Mode 6 to see if a cylinder is actually misfiring. So now I'm going to go and change my module. I'll tap on the up arrow. I'll go to Global OBD2. And now I'm going to go to non-continuous mode 6. And when I go to non-continuous mode 6, it's going to ask me if I want to see the test results. I'll go ahead and tap on OK. And now I'm going to scroll up until I find misfire data. And I'm looking for misfire data A1, A2, or A3, mid A1 mid A2 or mid A3. And it's quite a ways down because there's a lot of information on this Nissan. And now if you look, we are there at misfire A1. And you'll notice I'll scroll through looking at cylinder 1 through cylinder 4. And I see nothing that shows any kind of unusual error. So this misfire must be very light under load. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go check with my scope to determine what my problem might be. But before I do that, I'll hit done. And then I'm going to go over to my engine module. And I'm going to go look with the scope at secondary ignition, and we'll see what's happening. So I'm going to go to the scope. I'll go to ignition scope. And now I'm going to change my probe to capacitive. And now I'm going to go under the hood. Now your scope is a two-channel lab scope. This is the one that attaches with a USB port to the top of the um, handset. Um, it's actually two channels, 40 million samples per channel. I'm hooked up to yellow channel number one. I'm going to take my coil unplug adapter, and I'm going to touch each coil to see which one's highest. You'll notice right now, if I'm looking at cylinder number four, it's fine. Cylinder number three is fine. Cylinder number two looks good. When I go to cylinder number one, suddenly I got a high spike. So I have high resistance or something that might be wrong with cylinder number one. So let's determine if cylinder number one is either coil related or maybe an injector at fault. So now I'm going to switch to a different part of my scope. So I'll close out of this. I'm going to change my lead set. I'm going to back probe in injector number one. I'm going to change my coil unplug lead. I'm now hooked up to my injector. I back probed that. I'm going to go ahead and tap on preset meters. I'll tap on injector meter, and let's see what our scope is showing for the injector. Now, if you look at it, you'll see my injector pattern's in good working order. So I now know I've got a good injector, so my problem is most likely related to the secondary ignition system, either coil or spark plug. But I want to do one other thing first. I want to verify that my injector pulse width can be manipulated by the car's controller. So to do that, I'm going to go back to data stream. I'm going to close out of my scope. And I'm going to go over to um, um, data stream. But before I do that, I've got to go look at a video to see if, I can, if it can show me how to do that. There are micro videos in the tool that are built in that will help you learn how to do some tests. So I'm going to go right to diagnostic information. I'll go to my video library. I'm going to scroll until I find an injector video. I'll tap on the injector video. I'll bring it so I can see it a little bit better. We'll let the video play through. It'll give you an exact setup on how to set up your scan tool. And it'll tell you how to set up data stream so I can now look at what's happening with my injectors. I snap the throttle back and forth. 
This way I'll know if I have injector control with actual input from the throttle position or otherwise. So now that I've looked at that video, I'm going to close out. I'll hit done. I'm going to go to data stream. I'm going to go ahead and set up my injector pulse width. That's the only one I'm going to look at. And I have my assistant in the car, and he's going to open and close the throttle for me. What you want to do is you want to put injector pulse width up on, up on data stream. And then you want to slowly increase the throttle and decrease the throttle, watching for injector pulse width changes. So I'm going to give my assistant the go ahead to do that. He's going to go ahead and increase the throttle. And you notice my pulse width is changing, it's rising, and now he's going to bring my throttle back down. So let's go over our scenario. Right now, you'll notice that I had good control of my injector with the change of throttle. So input change to the controller was able to change output of the injector control. So I have fuel control, all right? Pulse width did change. We also noticed that we didn't see anything wrong with mode six and we had no fault codes. However, when I went to check each and every coil, four, three, two, and one, and when I got to cylinder number one, I had extreme high resistance. My voltage was higher than the other three, which tells me that my problem may have been coil and plug or the plug, either coil or the plug itself. Now, we did verify that the injector wasn't at fault there either. So we saw that the injector was working in perfect order. So more than likely, since there was only one cylinder with this problem, my problem is related to either a bad plug or a coil itself.